Hey, welcome everyone. Uh, we're having another live stream event here for Ancestry.com and today we're going to talk a little bit about city directories. These are really wonderful resources that I think sometimes don't get utilized as much as they can be. They can be very helpful to us in our research and not just for that list of names and addresses that we usually zoom right to. Um, there are a lot of other things in city directories that can help us get to know our ancestors neighborhood and that's always a good thing because when we get to know their neighborhood we start figuring out other places is where they may have left records. So um, we have two really large collections of city directories on Ancestry. And the best way right now to get to them is the card catalog. And as I mentioned, we actually have two large collections of U.S. directories. If we go down here and filter by schools, directories, and histories, you can see they're both right here. This is our older collection down here of U.S. city directories. This collection was created years ago and it was created using OCR, which is Optical Character Recognition Technology. That meant a computer went through and it read the directories and or tried to read the directories. And it really wasn't a perfect science, but it was a way to get these pu important publications out quickly and easily and as many of them as possible out to you. But technology's come a long way and we're working on improving our city directory corrections. We're actually gone in and started indexing the information in them. And this collection up here at the top, this U.S. City Directories that says, you can tell this is a new one, it has beta after it. And this one has got a lot more records in it, and it's also a lot better experience working with these records. So I want to show you around a little bit. We're actually in the process of moving the old directories into this collection, so you are going to see some new additions coming up as we go along. But, um, and you can, a great way to stay in touch, I wanted to point out, with new collections as they're coming out and as collections are being updated like this one, if you go to our Learning Center tab or select that Family History 101 there, um, if, when you click on this, this is all of our different social media. We're really trying to do a better job of communicating our content releases and updates to you through some of the social media. So if you're on Twitter, you can follow us on Twitter and uh, we're, we try to send out tweets whenever an important content update goes out. Uh, Facebook is another great place to stay in touch with um, other people and we try to let our Facebook community know whenever there's a new and significant update. And of course our Ancestry.com corporate blog is also a great resource. So those are some ways that you can kind of keep up with all the new things that are coming up on Ancestry. But back to our directories, because this is such a huge collection and includes thousands of individual publications, um, it's not just one book or one particular place, they're different out of state. There's, right now we don't have all the states covered, but eventually, hopefully, we'll have content from all U.S. states. And uh, we have a lot of major U.S. cities. Um, you can go in, the best way to fi figure out what's included in this collection is to kind of take a, take a peek under the hood. And you can see, you can go into the browse here, and I had actually looked at this one from 1940 for Indianapolis. And you just go in and select the, the, count, or the state, the city, and sometimes cases, if you're looking in a rural area, a good tip is to look for the name of the county because sometimes directories were published on a county level and they'll include some smaller municipalities. So those are a good thing to look for as well. And then you'd select the year and the directory. And so let's, um, once you know what's there, you can use this information. Now that you know what directories are there, you can use the information to focus your search in that directory. So I could go in and look and say, okay, my ancestor was a Smith living in Indianapolis. And I don't, oh, I, I don't always add a first name because I, if I'm going to look for that uh, alphabetical listing, they're all the Smiths are going to be together there anyway. In some cases, and I'll show you an example of another um, uh, type of directory listing where you may want to actually add a given name. So we can go in and specify the residence year. And if I only want to look at that directory or maybe directories around 1940, maybe I want to look up that address so we can go look them up, um, browse to them in the 1940 census. And we can click on search and it's going to take us to the page where the Smiths are. And I can click through to the image. And you can see these are all the alphabetical listings for Smith. And there's probably quite a few of them. Actually, we have the smalls on this page, too. So this is quite a busy page. Here the Smiths are down here in the corner. 
Um, so that's a great way to quickly zoom in on your ancestor, where their listing is, grab that address so you can use it. And I'll show you a little bit later about how to use the address and with some of the new tools we have for searching the 1940 census. So let's go back to that directory. We'll go back to the main page. Here, another way to explore city directories, though, and to really get more from them is to browse through them. And I like to go in and really explore what's included in the directories and see what types of things it's going to tell me about the communities where my ancestor lived. Uh, when you first go in, a lot of the directories are going to have a lot of advertisements. A lot of times they'll cram them in at the beginning, but typically within the first five or maybe ten pages even, you're going to be able to find some sort of a cover page, a title page, like this one here. You can he see here, this is the Indianapolis one. And you can see it tells us um, some of the things. It also includes these other areas. So these are probably suburbs of Indianapolis that are included in the directory. Um, alphabetical directory of business and citizens, householders, occupants of offices. And this is something that I'll show you in a little bit too that's really helpful is a complete street and avenue guide. These are great resources for learning, you know, where on this street did your ancestor live. And we can go ahead, I've kind of explored this one so we don't have to do too much browsing. I don't have to spend a lot of your time as I page through. So um, following the title page, you'll usually find a general index to the information that's included. And it's a great idea to go through and look and see. This is a great way to explore them. And then you'll see the page numbers. And we can off the page number here um, and try to add that on to where you're at to try and navigate around. You'll probably have to bounce around a little bit. It's not a perfect science, but it works pretty well. Um, abbreviations is a great thing to look at too because although a lot of city directories use the same um, abbreviations, some of them varied a little bit. So it's always good to um, make sure you're understanding exactly what each entry is telling you. A lot of times you're going to find a list of advertisements. I didn't see that in here, an index of advertisements, but a lot of times you'll find that. Um, another thing that's really helpful, uh, knowing what churches, what cemeteries are in the area. Clergymen, uh, if your ancestor worked for any of the municipalities, they may be listed in here. Um, if they belong to any fraternal organizations, you may want to look and see what different fraternal organizations were in the area. Sometimes you might find a picture of an ancestor, you know, in some type of fraternal organization's uniform, and you're trying to identify what that uniform is. This can give you a great starting point. Look and see what um, organizations were popular in the area. Um, going through just some of the other things, just getting to know what schools are in the area, newspapers, what newspapers were in print at the time when your ancestor lived in a place. So always a great idea. Just go through this, look and see, depending on who you're looking at, that's another important thing to look at. So let's take a look at some of these things. And I've kind of sketched out uh, the location of some of the places. We, like I said, we don't have to do a lot of the browsing back and forth. But for example, um, on page 1012, we find a listing of all the different cemeteries in the area. So you can go in and see that we have all the different addresses of various locations. So you could go in and look, identify where your ancestor lived in the town. And in some cases, you'll even find a local map in these, um, in these city directories. Um, so you may be able to use this, uh, the map in conjunction with these directory listings to place the cemetery in a particular place, as well as your ancestor, and try and figure out what the closest cemetery and the most likely place where family members may be buried. Um, a couple pages later, we have the clergy listed. Or actually, this is the churches. They're on the clergy's on 1015. And this is really, some people may wonder why we would want to look for clergy. Now, think about if you have a marriage record, a civil marriage record of an ancestor, it may include the name of the person who officiated at that ceremony. And with that information, you may not have the actual church name on there. A lot of times that's not included. But if you have the name of that officiant, sometimes you can look through these listings of clergymen and say, Harry Hoover is listed on your ancestor's um, marriage record. It says he was a Roman K, he was in the Roman Catholic Church. And here's his address of 4217 Central Avenue. So now I can go back to those church listings. And I'm going to look, they're listed by denomination, 
So I can go look at this Roman Catholic listing and go down the page and look for a church that's around Central Avenue. And you can see St. Joan of Arc, Roman Catholic Church, Central Avenue, northeast corner of 42nd. So that 4217 address, this is the church he's most likely affiliated with. So now I can go in and request more records from this church, perhaps a church marriage record, uh, as well as perhaps if they stayed in that parish, they, their children may have been baptized there later. So they may have left sub subsequent re records in that area. So this is a great thing to do to be able to tie them to a church through this directory. Um, we talked a little bit about newspapers, knowing what newspapers are available in the area where your ancestor lived. And you see here, it even lists uh, all the music teachers in the area. If you had an ancestor who's a music teacher, you may find them, or in any business, you may find them in the professional listings as well. And this is one of the instances where you may want to put in that first name. Once you've browsed the addresses, you may want to put in that first name and see what other entries for them you'll find. You may find them here. You may find them in what's called a reverse directory, which I'll show you in a minute. But here, down here, you can see these are all the newspapers. There's probably more on the next page. I can go in and grab the names of these directories and put them into a search engine. Or perhaps I can go, I'd want to go look at Ancestry.com. And we can go to the search page. And we have a large collection of historical newspapers. And they're down here towards the bottom. You click on this. And I can go in and browse. Uh, what directories by state. You can go in and go into the card catalog this way, try and narrow it down by state and location and find out what no newspapers we have. Maybe some of these newspapers that were in print at that time are available online. Also try doing online searches. Um, put them into a search engine. Um, look at local libraries with large genealogical collections because a lot of times they'll have some of these newspapers on microfilm. I thought this one was interesting, the Hoosier Moose. And uh, when I Google it, it actually is a publication of the Royal Order of Moose. So if your ancestor was in a fraternal organization, they have, may have had a publication. And that would be something I would be definitely interested in looking for. So we can go ahead to, I wanted to show you the cross streets and the navigation. Um, if we go ahead to image 700, we can see, um, this is part of the, the reverse directory listings. And you can see on Boulevard Place, we actually have um, a listing here for, uh, the, it shows you where the streets intersect. Excuse me, I have someone knocking on my door. No one's here, but so they're going to have to wait. Um, 20th Street, you can see where 19th Street at, uh, intersects and 20th Street intersects. And we can go in. And we can go, oops, I have to get to the 1940. And now I can go to Indianapolis. I want to go to put in that first cross street of Boulevard Place. And I know that it intersects with 20th Street. So when I do that, I can click through now to the enumeration district. And as I click through to the enumeration district, I can start browsing through. One of the things that Ancestry's um, put on the browser is these image controls here. And we can switch this image over. And now I can start instead of looking, and here's Boulevard Place. When we flip our image back, we can see that at 2001, here's Isaiah Jeter. And here he is on the directory. And you can even see he's walking down the um, odd side of the street. So there, the next person would be Patterson. And there's the Pattersons. So this follows along the census path. Um, so this is a great way to explore the 1940 census. I did want to show you one last trick for working with city directories. And I actually, this is um, a list that I compiled. A lot of my ancestors were in New York City, and I we had a lot of James Kellys that I had to wade through trying to find mine. So what I did was I went through some early 1800s directories and just compiled them all. And you can see they're all from different years. I entered them into a spreadsheet, and I entered them with different fields, year, surname, given name, occupation, the street numbers and names, and different things like that. And as I went in and I entered them, now because I have each one in a different cell, I can go in and do sorts. And this kind of helps me take these, the scattered nature of these and arrange them. And I can go in using the data 
field and sort, and I can add a sort by occupation and a sort by given name because I do have some people besides James in here and then by year and you can see that when I do the sort now it all kind of comes together and I color coded these after I did the sort because you can see it brings all the James the Bakers together and all the people who made artificial flowers and in doing this I noticed that a lot of my family was involved in making artificial flowers and this clue if you know linking them through the city directories was one of the big breakthroughs in finding those ancestors. But as you see, I can, you can go down all the different people, the different occupations are grouped together, and you can even trace where they moved from year to year. So um, this is a really helpful tool. You could even use like index cards and sort it. If you're not comfortable with an Excel spreadsheet, that's another thing you could do. So um, that's all I have for you today. I want to thank you for joining us on another one of our live stream events. Um, you can join us on Thursday at 1 Eastern Time. Ancestry Ann is going to be talking about adding comments and corrections to records that you find on Ancestry.com. So thank you, everyone. Have a wonderful day.